Hello and welcome to the online painting magazine Art School. My name is Mara Trumbo of Art Expression Studio and I'm here to show you a fantastic technique I learned with Brenda Harris, a famous author, TV PBS artist and a good friend who has very kindly given me permission to follow my dream and create my own designs using her technique sponge painting. In my secret garden version, um, the only pattern is the gate and the fence post. So follow me, the rest of your garden will be your own secret. The colors I use are deco art traditions. They are very strong in pigment. One coating covers all and the one inch brush. For the starting of this painting, I have used a 16 by 20 canvas, slightly bigger than my original design. But since the pattern is only the gate and the fence, um, you can do your garden any size. We are using sapphire blue in the corners of the canvas. Both corners will be darker than the center. And that is because um, it shows off the infinity of the sky much better. And um, we are using a crisscross stroke because of the weave of the canvas. Or you may even be using a wood panel, but it's a good way, a good habit to get into. The crisscross allows your paint to cover every which way you look at it. Sometimes if you paint straight across like people paint houses, when you put it under a light, you'll see there's some weaves that have not been covered. So get into the habit of doing your crisscross stroke wherever and whatever surface you paint on. So we're going from dark to light into the center of your picture and coming down towards the horizon is also lighter. I have speeded up this video by the way I don't normally paint the speed but it's just that it gets a little boring if I do it um, at the normal speed which was two hours for the entire painting. So we get lighter towards the center. You do not want to smooth it too much. You want the effect of those little billowing clouds. And in order to come slowly down towards a golden yellow sunset, we are going to put white at the bottom before um, we go up to the blue. So I have washed the brush. I have loaded it with white. I'm now mixing a little bit of yellow to make it golden. Be careful because that yellow is very strong. And again, using crisscross strokes, I'm covering the bottom of the horizon, which is about a third of the size of your canvas. And slowly as we get up to the blue, um, there will be little tinges of green because blue and yellow makes green, but you don't want it to be too strong. A little accent is good. So I'm using more white there to blend it in and streaking some of that blue across. The sky is your own preference. If you wish to go into a more pink color at the bottom, um, I wouldn't even wash the brush in between. I would go from blue to pink, which forms a beautiful lilac color before it transitions to a solid pink. And always, always, always have a foundation of white. You don't want to look too strong unless you're painting an African sunset. But these colors are very, very subdued. I'm bringing in a little bit more of the blue over now that the bottom is dry. So there is a better transition between the blue and the yellow bottom um, of the horizon. So very, very softly stroke it along. Add a little bit more white in the center if necessary. And this will form the background of um, the very far away trees that you'll be seeing in the back of the garden. So you want this to be very soft. Okay, now one trick that I've learned lately, I used to frame all my paintings, which is very expensive and quite often the client says it's not to his taste or doesn't match his decor. <clears throat> so I have learned to paint the sides of my painting. You have to make sure, of course, that it's a continuation of the painting you have in front. So the color that you have goes back um, to, to the sides and the staples are at the back. So it looks like a finished product. Now you can see I speeded up this um, quite a lot. <laughs> and you see me going backwards and forwards, painting um, from the top down as well. 
because of the camera angle I've only have, have one camera I'm doing my own production so I have to remember at all times to keep out of your of your way so here we are we are now ready to start a span, sponge painting technique and this is going to be so much fun if you're worried about your fingernails getting dirty use gloves use sea sponges natural sea sponges because the synthetic sponge won't give you the same effect those little fingers in the sea sponge will help you do exactly what this technique requires load it up at the bottom with a dark color in this case it's um, dioxazine purple going into the lilac and into the white pounce it a few times on your plate or a piece of paper to make sure you don't have too much color coming off you want this very lacy and very transparent there's got to be little holes in the sky that allow the birds to fly through I can see some of the white blobs have come out a bit strong so I'm going to go over it again soften it up and then change the colors you can go more into the blue gray and the light violet and more white <clears throat> and change the variation of your trees you want different heights different shapes now remember these are background trees so the bottom may be covered up but we're still going to finish them as if they're going to be totally visible it's always good to get into the habit of that um, it allows you to be a little bit more conscientious about your work so here again I'm twisting my hand around don't forget that a sponge when loaded up it's like a rubber stamp if you just go dab 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 in the same position you will end up getting the same result every time so you want to twist your hand around you want to change the colors often now we're picking up the liner brush you might have had to wash your hands in between <laughs> and make a very inky solution with water and a grayish purplish um, color for the tree trunks push harder at the bottom as you come up so that the trunk is wider obviously than the branches going up I'm trying to keep my hand out of your way but sometimes it's not easy so you'll do um, just one main trunk of the tree or a few of them like there's a few bushes growing together and at this stage all the branches are going to be showing but we're going to sponge over them again so that it'll become three-dimensional otherwise it looks as though the skeleton of the tree is facing you and the branches and the foliage is just growing behind So this is just your first treatment of these trees if you make a boo-boo you can erase it with your fingers you've seen there if it's too thick don't rem don't forget that as you come up the branches become gradually smaller so release the pressure on your brush and paint with the tip so they come very very thin this would be a good theme to also paint on cards if you make your own greeting cards um, and you want to practice before you go on canvas please do um, people really really appreciate a hand painted card and um, I have seen when my elderly relatives passed away that they had kept every single one in the little treasure box for me <laughs> So now we reload the brush, the sponge, excuse me, and change colors. And sometimes you can superimpose some of the other colors you used on one onto the other. It adds a nice effect. And you just cover not all, but just some of the branches so that to make it look more natural. Now position your gate wherever you want, on your right, on your left, but remember never exactly in the middle. And you have to stop painting your chosen color. I have got a golden beige here that's going to be like a natural golden oak color for the wood fence and gate. So I'm just painting that across the screen the same thickness as the gate and the posts. And excuse me, the camera out of range, I'll adjust it. 
So now here you can go horizontal or vertical, it doesn't matter, it's just going to form a wood formation. So even if it's streaky, it makes it even look more like the natural wood. This is where the posts are going to go. You may wish to demarcate your uh, from the pattern with a little pencil mark where they are. And um, that's where the little bubbles on top. Oh, there's a name for them. They're called finials. On top of the gate will go. So dry your um, area where the gate and fence posts are going to go. Place your pattern on. And the color of the graphite paper you're going to use will depend on the color of your gate. I've used a golden color, so I'll be using a dark graphite. But if you've decided to paint yours a bright, say, olive green, you may wish to use a white graphite to trace your pattern with. Okay, this is what your trace pattern will look like. Don't worry about all the leftover above it because it's going to be blacked out. And why black? because we're going to use some black magic for this garden. Um, I've tried to expedite the process by using a sponge brush and some of you may prefer it. I've actually decided to switch over to a brush. It's easier to fill in the areas that I need more correctly. And um, I could have even switched over to the large one inch brush to do the top and the bottom. But I'm going to speed up this movie so not to get you tired of looking at me painting black. There's no specific technique again, but I do practice my crisscross strokes on this as well. And what I'm holding in my other hand is a clean wet brush. So every time I make a mistake again, I go in with a wet brush and, and take it out. So these are the negative spaces in between the fence. Now you can add the pickets uh, right up to the left side if you want to, but I intend putting bushes there, so I'm not going to bother wasting time um, putting more pickets over there. But of course, as you see, towards the end, I changed my mind and I will add another one, just because my rose bush would have looked too big. So, fill in the space there. And why we use black is it's because it's a great um, color to go behind bushes. It adds so much depth and definition to a painting. It's unbelievable. I've done this also when I paint in oils. I have put a black background in a lot of my season skies. In fact, when I follow the Bob Ross technique, I do that. And the colors above become magic. And especially when you use transparent colors and uh, people don't see it. If I'm demonstrating at a show, all they're seeing is a black canvas. And the next thing is I pick up a little bit of white and those colors pop up like magic and they can't believe the uh, effect it gives. And it's the same in acrylic. Um, of course, this will become dry. You're not going to use it while it's wet. So it's slightly different technique to the wet on wet. But it's the same principle is to bring out the resolution of the colors against a dark background. Of course, now you also paint the bottom and the sides of the canvas. And uh, let's not forget the slats between the gate where you're seeing the background of the garden. And this is done with your smaller brush, your size 8 brush. You can even use a liner brush if you're a little nervous about it. Um, do this. I had to do it because of the filming on my easel, which is twice as hard. Feel confident, feel uh, better about yourself putting it on a table. And I know a lot of people say you can't do fine art flat on a table. Well, this is just a technicality here. You're not painting something visual that uh, requires to go at a distance with perspective. It's just lines. So feel free to put it flat down. Now let's cut the pattern out, place it on top of your gate, and let's begin the sponging again. 
We didn't use green the first time because background trees are often see in a bluish hue. But as you get closer, the greens will start showing. And this is now your close-up tree that we're putting in, middle ground and foreground. So we're going to use the three greens, the dark at the bottom, a middle green, and mixed with yellow and white on the tip will give you the lighter shade. And again, experiment with your greens, add a little bit of brown, add a little bit of blue, don't have the same green throughout. I'm going to be switching over and mixing a different green here with the leftover sky colors of blue and yellow and white. And you can do some bushes and some trees here. Um, Take your time. I'm doing it at, uh, at a speed, as you can see, I've even fastened the, the movie here so it doesn't get too boring, but the technique is the same throughout. But when you're at home and you're deciding what flowers you want where, um, you can start putting them in as from now. You can load up your sponge with the flower colors on the very tip as well. Now we're back to putting some trunks and branches and please vary your colors of these as well I have got a light gray here and you can use some white for um, what would be aspen flowers uh, trees I suppose some bushes um, if you put black on black it's not going to show much so you'd have to use like a dark brown in some of them I'm erasing some of the thicker ones at the bottom and smudging them with my finger as well. That's a wet sponge that I just used as an eraser. And perhaps now it's um, after doing a few more little bushes, it's time we're going to remove the masking pattern. Brenda actually used to use um, a contact paper that you had to cut out and use as a mask on top or you could use masking liquid and sponge right through the gate uh, I've tried to simplify it for you but every one of those methods is good if you have the patience to do it you can use the contact paper as well now I've put some of the white on to create some blossoms uh, perhaps a bit too many but you can go back and uh, with the green and blot some out now here I'm going to be putting some antique roses. I've actually got white and yellow on this sponge and I'm just using the tip as you can see and blotting some on and the visual effect is actually quite good but it's just too much white so I'm going to go back in and put some lilac on top so that the yellow look like faded um, masses of cluster English roses. I used to grow them and I absolutely love them. Now these will be growing behind the fence, but some of them are coming through the last picket on the right, as you can see. I'm putting some bushes at the back there, and uh, eventually those probably will be brushed out because I've suddenly remembered that's where the grassy knoll is going to go. So we need to start making some grasses. So I'll pick up my brush again and come across it and just wipe those flowers out and start making... Um, the beginning of a lawn. I'm sorry if the brush is a little bit out of your filming range but um, I'm doing the same off camera as I am on camera. So dark green at the bottom with a little bit lighter green on top. I've even thrown some yellow on there. And do not cover the black straight underneath your bushes. You don't want to do that because that adds a contrast between where the uh, knoll ends and your tree line starts. So holding your brush flat, just pitter patter, pitter patter all these different colors on. Don't over blend. And of course carry the same colors underneath so that you're seeing them through the fence. Fade them out onto the black underneath. And 
and after the knoll is dry we'll be um, doing the pathway that goes from the gate out so let's remove that and refine some of the areas so we'll go around the posts with a little bit of green too many white flowers there they're going to be greened out <laughs> And some more greenery along, along there, coming underneath, coming by the roses, continue the lawn over there, here, plug up the holes, and then move on to map out the garden path. Um, I'm loading my brush with um, Sienna and just going slightly through the posts up the hill at this stage it doesn't have to be exact it's just underlaying the foundations as it were and just decide how you want to come down of course yours may have a different twist and turn but that's what's beautiful about it it's free hand and you decide exactly where your path is going to lead So this is just sienna going in which of course will then be flanked by umber on the dark uh, shadow side and some lighter colors where the sun is hitting and i put some of it underneath the posts and across here and again i'm sorry my camera range isn't showing as much but um, i'm zigzagging across in front of the gate onto the rest of the garden path one of these days i'm going to have a second camera to help me <laughs> just refining redefining here some of the width of the path you don't want it to be thin and then thick and then thin again so it's got to be a gradual sizing of it with some grasses encroaching onto it too because don't forget this is not a a paved path it's a, a little country path, so it can be rough on the edges. Throw in some green where it's growing underneath the posts. And this is really just for effect. And again, as I said, it's a, it's a muddling of colors. You don't want to be exact. You don't want to mix your colors like a Betty Crocker recipe. Okay, it's just a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but side by side on the brush, and it gives you the most beautiful effects on the ground. These are all natural earth colors, greens and sienna and umber. Some of the black will still be showing through on the floor, but that's okay. So now we're just going to correct again around. I've added a little bit more green onto those white roses. I just felt there were too many there. And we want to show the depth behind the gate. And some more sponging. This one is um, red with white. I've picked up a little bit of yellow there, which makes a nice little coral color. So we'll come through and do on the right side um, some lower bushes with similar colors. Now you can see the, the shape of those little round blobs from the sponge. I'm not moving it enough. And uh, so you have to go over it a couple of times so that it looks slightly different. Okay, so now we get to redefine the garden path again, putting some light to show through. And again, zigzag your brush here, there, everywhere. Don't go directly under the gate because it's casting a shadow there. So that'll be its darkest part, in fact. So whatever colors you have on your palette, I'm, I'm putting on uh, the beiges, a little bit of the white, back to the sienna to darken it. And this is an ongoing process you know you can touch it up as many times as you like and that's the beauty of this uh, paint it's uh, it covers beautifully so if a mistake is made or an improvement is required let's not call them mistakes they're happy accidents remember um, just pick up the next color and on you go and sometimes you can throw the oddest colors in between i've picked up a bit of blue and a bit of gray there and you know what i quite like it um, eventually it might even look like a water puddle 
Now with a big brush I'm just going across very very softly and here you can actually use your mop brush as well. Take it out of focus a little bit while it's still wet. So what's next? We have to uh, highlight the grass with the light shining right on top of the little knoll. It's looking a bit dull so a little bit of sunshine yellow will do it. This is the Hansa yellow light and as your brush uh, gets dirty you just move down very very softly add up a little bit of the lighter green and addition it add it onto the sides where the sun is hitting it but it's a little bit more faded because it's on the incline so your path is beginning to take shape but it's by no means done it just gives you an idea of how grasses can grow in between you can put some even around the picket fence to start with and now we're going to shade the gate and the posts we're using the small size 8 flat brush and as you see here I didn't pick it up I picked up the fill bit by mistake but it's the same size so I'm going to give it a go and see how it goes <coughs> working good so we have the white above blended with beige below So we're going to do the highlights first and again if it helps you uh, my painting is upright on the easel please put it flat down on the table so you can even rest your other hand to hold the canvas steady Don't forget when you reload to make sure that you lift your brush again in the same position with the light color on the left side and the darker beige on the right side which will later even deepen the shadows by um, doing the same exercise on the other side with beige and brown whoops a little bit crooked there don't worry we'll cover it up a few a few flowers on top of it and you'll never know it happened here we go now if the finials are crooked this is a good time to fix them in fact i'd even somehow made three little extra protrusions there between the post and the finial i don't know why and i'll be fixing it soon Now I'm painting from the side again with my tri-vision glasses, <laughs> trifocal glasses. I'm seeing things twisted as it is and I'm trying to keep my hand out of the camera way. So uh, I am going crooked. I'm now picking up a wet clean brush and erasing all the boo-boos. And if they don't all come out that's okay later on we can uh, paint some of the background ferns and things that are behind the gate that's a little bit too white let's try and put a bit more beige on it better but slight that's okay we'll fix it later everything is fixable remember never ever panic you are here to paint for fun it is not an examination it does not have to be perfect nobody knows there's been a boo-boo made except you and don't be too self-critical i have some friends on facebook that panic at every little instance and um, i said to them this is meant to be therapy painting you mean to relax and enjoy whatever comes out comes out it's always a learning exercise you'll do better next time but they strive to be perfect the first time they paint don't do it you lose half the fun along the way after all the years i've been painting i still make lots of boo-boos and, and you can see them here i actually have not cut them out of the of the production 
just to show you that I'm also human as well as a crazy artist. So we're slowly coming to the end of the light highlighting. And those finials were looking a little bit small, so I'm slightly enlarging them as I go along. Of course, the left, the right side is unfinished, so don't worry if I'm smudging there or going wrong, because it'll be covered up in a little while. I've probably changed the shape of things as I go along. Um, and it happens and if it looks okay leave it it doesn't have to be exactly like the pattern when i started painting this piece um no sooner I had the paint dried that i had sold it and i'm fortunate that i've kept uh, the photographs in every instance to look back and to show you just how many times I have used that pattern and uh, actually painted a totally different uh, picture from it. So you'll enjoy doing the same. Now we're going to go with the beige and the amber to do the shadows. Now because the pattern happens to be the same width as the brush you may have to hold your brush slightly sideways so that you don't go over the white again you still leave a slim little white line on the edge but if that is a problem for you hold the brush at an angle slightly there I've made it too thick I'm going to have to fix that either erasing it or putting leaves on top of the bush coming through course you realize from the position of my hand I'm painting upside down now right I'm on top of the canvas looking down I should do that in front of my dressing table so I've got a mirror to see where I'm going I might invent that Now, if you're wondering if this is what it's going to look like when it's finished, um, let me put your mind at rest right now. I have also got <clears throat> acrylic paint pencils. And when this is finished, this is one way of tidying it up, is to go along the sides with them. So that you straighten out all the little crooked bits either that or you may wish to leave it as is and it'll really look like a country gate you know handmade so nothing is too perfect and we're going to put a little bit of sunshine in between but i think this white is too white it's although i've used the creamy white <clears throat> i'm going to darken it a little bit with the beige and that's just to define the slat the z-shaped slats um, that are holding the pickets together and they're at the back of the gate not in front now some of them would be in a cast shadow so they wouldn't all show but So the underneath part will just do slightly darker to redefine them. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so back to sponging we go. Here's the big bush that I told you I was going to paint over there, okay? And eventually realize I didn't make it big enough uh, to fill the gap where the other post would have been. So there's ways to fix it either we enlarge the bush or we make another picket over there choice is yours here i've got uh, blues like little bluebells on the floor <clears throat> here i've picked up some little yellow daisy colors on top of the green 
Now I'm doing dot dot painting in a straight line. They're going to almost look like lavenders, but they're in red instead of um, purple. And it's just dot dot dots in red with dots dot dots of white on top. You can have any color that you like. I'm just trying to alternate the colors so that your garden looks very colorful. Now here I'm going to do some roses and the roses are very easy. There it's just a blob of yellow with little comma strokes all the way around in white. And the buds would obviously just be one little dot with yellow and white. And they don't have to be precise. As I said, this is not a test. It's a visual effect. And when you're far away and you're seeing tiny little things like that, uh, even if you're at a museum looking at the great master's work, um, you know why they have a rope that's about three feet away from the painting? For two reasons. So that you don't touch it with your grubby hands while you're eating chips. Uh, for security. Uh, so that you don't set the alarm off. But also because if you go close up, you get to see what looks like very impressionistic brush strokes that mean nothing until you move way back. And then the optical illusion takes place and you're actually seeing a bush of roses. And that's what's happening with this one. It's just, as I said, blobs of yellow with white little comma strokes all the way around forming the petals. Now you can have some winding around. Uh, if they're creeping roses, they can wind around the picket fence as well. Now I'm putting some yellow flowers here. They're called Settembrini in Italian because they're normally grown in September. And I haven't found the English translation for them as yet. But they normally are uh, autumn flowers. And they're much taller than these, but I've shortened them. And I think we're allowed to do... <laughs> cloning of different flowers and uh, pollination of different varieties on a painting. It's our own creation. And as Bill Alexander, who's one of the artists I greatly admire, used to say, this is your world here. You are the God that creates. So uh, with all due respect to Mother Nature, uh, we take over when we paint a sponge painting. Now you can dab, dab, dab up for some of the taller ones with a little bit of white at the end. And you don't want to go down on the sponge too strong. Otherwise you're going to have very hard looking things. You want that black to show through to show the depth of the flowers. And here I'm switching colors and I'm putting some greenery in front here, which will continue to the front. And I'm sorry, it's a little bit out of range. And with my rake brush, I'm doing a fern here. And it's just got... Um, sap green and no it's got sage green and white on here and later on you can deepen the colors um, if you feel it's too light once we start doing a revision of the painting now these are like um, lavenders I have got purple at the bottom blue in the middle and white at the top and I'm just going up and down up and down with them So this is where you start looking at your painting and say, okay, what needs doing now? Let's fix it. Let's just look around and put a few white daisies there, a few little red flowers on the right. Same technique. And let's fix this path here. Now the sun is shining in front here, so we're going to introduce some light color, which is the beige together with the yellow and a little bit of white. And I'm actually going a little bit too far on the left with it. Um, and I will have to readjust it afterwards. And the reason why is the sun is shining from left to right. So on the right side, the sun will go right up to the flowers. But on the left side, they will be casting the shadow, especially the tall ones. So I will have to reintroduce the dark there. And there's two ways of doing it. Either you put more dark on the left or more light on the right. Um, I tend to do both because I keep on changing my mind and experimenting and also showing you the various ways of doing things. And here I go again, I'm pushing the light color onto the left, which I shouldn't, but we'll fix it. Don't worry, we'll fix it. Don't go under the gate. Remember, the place will be dark there. 
Now we're going to put a little creeper going around the post there with some little leaves. And you can alternate the green. I've got light green right now and I'll pick up some dark green to go on top. It's too much the same as the plant below. So this is where you start looking around and saying, okay, what would you prefer to have growing there? You could have wisteria, which would look lovely as well. You could have morning glories. If you've got the patience to do the little trumpet flowers, it would be nice. This could actually be a very good therapeutic painting to do. If you're into painting little flowers like a lot of decorative painters are, oh, you're going to go crazy on doing this. Of course, I'm the quick and easy type, you know, having learned one stroke with Donna Jubilee, everything has got to be quick and easy. But I tried to find a happy medium, having studied fine art as well as decorative painting, as well as one stroke. I try and blend all three and give you the best of everything. So what's left? A little bit here, a little bit there. Let's put a few more leaves onto that rose bush. It still doesn't go far enough to cover where that post would have been distance-wise. Well, we'll come back to it in the final um, touch-up session. So more little light. Don't make your leaves all the same color. You know, I try and alternate there too. I put some lights and some darks in between because some of them are being affected by the sun. And yes, we can't forget our three little birds up in the sky. M-shaped with a stroke across will form the body. V-shaped will be a further away smaller one. And then another one flapping his little wings. Okay, I made a boo-boo there, so I'm erasing it again with a clean, wet brush. The sky is dry, so it doesn't get messed up. And let's put the third one up here. You can't just have two, remember? And they're all flying the same direction. So, little body there. And here we are. Now, I told you we would land up um, fixing the gates and the posts. What I have is a dark amber pen and a light sienna pen. And I'm alternating with sienna on top. And where the gate is still crooked, I'm reintroducing the black that should have been behind it. Told you it was easy. <laughs> and somebody may say it's cheating well it's not everything is fair in love and war and painting I've just added that in so enhance the shadows there on this side and I see you've gone a little bit crooked but we'll fix that too again um I would suggest you do this flat on a table. And that one's got some flowers <clears throat> growing on the top. But they're meant to be in the background, so may, I may add the top of that um, post there. Although this <clears throat> comes from your mind and your imagination, sometimes you have to think as if you were looking at a picture that's in front of you. Where is the sun shining? Where do the shadows fall? If those roses are right in the back, on the bush at the back, the top of that fence should show. So that was a, a, a virtual mistake I'll have to fix up. So this is going to be a little bit boring. Please forgive. It's going to be a lot of pen and ink or paint pens <laughs> fixing up. But that will straighten your fence now. I'm also seeing that the last two pickets on this gate are slightly lower than the rest and that'll be fixed up when I and you know when I find these things out most of the time when I photograph them and I'm about ready to finish up and then I realize there's a boo-boo that hasn't been fixed what are they gonna say about it 
So down it comes and we start fixing and then I re-photograph it again before the final thing is put together. I used to film and talk at the same time and I found out I can't chew gum and walk so um, also because of the editing uh, I would have to cut out scenes where I'm in the middle of talking so I decided to film in silence which is very hard for an Italian to do to keep quiet right through the painting because I didn't know how to switch the sound off on my camera initially that was a real sufferance um, now I found out I can turn the volume right down to nothing. It still picks up the loud noises, but uh, I'll eventually get that sorted out too. And I'll put the sound over later when it's been um, edited. And I know the length of the movie and just how much I can say or not say. This is a thicker black pen there, going there. And yes, we do need a handle to open that gate. Almost left it out, but I could see the pattern shining through there. So we just do three dots on top, three dots at the bottom, joined together, which will give you that nice antique wrought iron look. Now for the hinges. <clears throat> of course, the pattern will show them going on to the round post. I decided here at the last minute I would change them. And my husband, who's an engineer, thinks it's better. course the gate may fall off the post one of these days but don't let that worry you your painting will still be standing this is done with a extra fine sharpie starting to take shape right I may still fix those finials I can see a difference in the round balls and in the bits below Okay, so let's carry on. Shadow side, light side being done, shadow side. Don't forget if you've got a plant there, you just do the little bits that are showing. Don't go over the plant. Stop and start again. There's a lot of foliage on that one showing, so the left side doesn't show. <clears throat> Here we are. Now the gates and posts are being hit by the sun, so you're going to put some sunlight kisses right on top. We're going to mix a little bit of the beige because the white is too stark white. That's a warm white I'm mixing in with the beige and just touching the top. Now at this stage, the last two pickets on that fence are lower than the rest. And yes, I can see it and I'm going to fix it. But if you can get them right to start with, is better. Yeah, let's put one that's disappearing a little bit behind the flowers. That's it. Some of the blue flowers, not the roses, because the roses are right at the back. Highlight the finial a little bit more. Now, depending how fastidious you are, you could actually even do a wood pattern, the wood grain pattern along here with various shades of brown and beige, and but just finger painting for me works. So that shows a little bit of the texture there. Now that paint seems to have sunk in, so I'm just redoing it again. 
a little bit lighter. Okay. And on top of those. So now I'll sign my name and step back and have a look at um, everything that could do with a lost tweak. And here is the previous photograph I took and you can see the yellow rose bush needs a, a post in there and also the gate has been fixed. Now if you can't fix it, tweak it, sign it, call it finish, but have fun with it. This is the final piece. And by no means the last one I'll be painting. Here's my previous ones. Same pattern, different outcome. Enjoy yourselves. Thank you for being with me today. I'm Mara Trumbo. I enjoyed being with you on this journey. And please do join Deco Art and our online school soon again. And thank you to all my friends who have made this possible, including you.